Hi everybody, it's Becca from Becca Harkins Art. First of all, I would just like to thank you all so much for your overwhelming support of my YouTube channel. I know it's about on the new side, but I've been gaining new subscribers every day and your comments and your likes have just been so encouraging. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Um, I have been getting a lot of requests for how I mix my paints or what type of paint I'm using. So I, I'm not exactly sure what everybody's asking about, if they're asking for the brand of paint or if they're asking for if I'm using oil or acrylics or a different type of paint. Um, but I'm just going to go through a real quick tutorial today on how I mix my paints for the Dutch pour. It's a pretty simple recipe. I find that it works time and time again. It's pretty reliable. So um, I'm just going to get the camera turned around and we'll get started and hopefully this will be helpful. Okay. So for my paints, I always start with American Floetrol as my base paint, and that's in this bottle right here. Um, this is a gallon, and I get mine at Home Depot for $14.99. Um, and you can get a half gallon, but it's like, no, it's a quarter of a gallon, and you can get it for about $8. So getting the larger size is definitely worth it if you can find yours at your local hardware store. And a couple things you need to know about American Flood Flow Trawl is, um, first of all, where you can get it, and second of all, um, that you have to strain it. So a lot of paint pourers will mix their, uh, run their flow trawl through a strainer first, and that works fine. Um, but I don't like the extra cleanup, so I have devised a little method here where I just put, I cut up a pair of stockings. I'll just take like a pair of stockings like this and just cut a piece off. And then I use a hair tie to tie it over the top of the lid of the flow draw. And then I can just keep that on there and I can continue to put the lid on and off like so. And it works just fine. So I mix my paints, two parts flow draw to one part paint and then water to thin. And I know that can be confusing sometimes to know exactly how much water to put in. I feel like that's the trickiest part. And it kind of depends on what type of paint you're using. I honestly don't usually measure, but for the sake of your learning today, I'm going to use this cup that has me measurements on it. And those numbers right there are ounces. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in about two ounces of flow trawl and as you can see that just went right through the nylon it got out all of the thick parts kept them in the bottle and then sometimes I use Liquitex which I'm gonna mix this paint up today I'm also going to do an example of how I use golden fluid acrylics you don't need nearly as much because this is a super high viscosity paint and then when I started out, I was using Master's Touch because, hey, I was just starting. I had no idea if I was going to be good at this or not, and these were on sale. So I have a whole lot of these, and they're okay, um, but I do find Liquitex is, Liquitex is better, and Golden is better yet, but you pay for it. The Golden is very expensive. So I've got two ounces of American Flood Floetrol in this up here and then I'm going to add in one ounce of paint until it gets up to that three mark. A smidge more and it doesn't, it really doesn't have to be super exact. Um, some people like to measure and I think that can be super helpful especially when you're starting out to really understand what you're doing. Because if you make something and it works great, you want to be able to replicate it. And if you measure, well, it makes it that much easier. Um, I just don't like to measure. So I don't usually do that. And I kind of like to learn the hard way. I feel like I learn better that way. Um, but anyway, so then after you put your paint in, I recommend that you mix it before you put your water in. Because if you're mixing it after you put your water in, it's harder to get it to mix in fluidly. It does take a little while to mix in, but it's really not too difficult. I just want to, sorry, I'm blocking you as I'm mixing here. Scrape your sides, get it all mixed in. And then I want to show you what this is going to look like here. 
um, once you have your paint and your flow trial mixed together. Um, this is the recipe that we use for our uh, straight pours. We don't add any water to it. And as you can see, it's pretty thick. Um, kind of like glops off the stick and um, you can see it creates a bit of a, a bit of a mountain there. And um, that's gonna be a little bit on the thick side for a Dutch pour. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in some water and I don't usually measure this, but for the sake of learning today, I'm gonna scrape this off so we can see just where we're at. So I'm ended up being just slightly below the three there, probably because there's some paint on the sides and on the um, stick. So I'm gonna add in about, about that much water, if you can see that. Um, I would guess that's like an eighth of an ounce maybe. And I'm gonna mix that in. And I also advise that you don't mix all, try to mix all of the water at once because when it's a lot of water, well, two reasons. One, when it's a lot of water, it's really difficult to get it smooth. And the other reason is because it's always easier to add and mix more water than it is to add and mix paint and flow trawl. Your ratios can get off and it just doesn't mix as easily to add paint or flow trawl after you've added the water. So here we can see that it's definitely thinner. It's still creating a little bit of a mound and a little bit of a trace, um, but it's not as thick as it was. But this needs to be a little bit thinner yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit more water. And what you're going for here is not necessarily the amount of water that you're adding in, but you're going for consistency. Ultimately, you want all of your paints to be the same consistency so that they flow at the same rate and you get better control over your outcome. So I'm gonna mix this up here. Um, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Sorry, I'm trying to keep it in camera for you. And it's getting thinner, getting thinner. Um, you can see that flows off, it creates still a little bit of a trace, um, but it's, you can see it's flowing off the stick now at a pretty even rate. It's getting closer. I'm going to add just a little bit more water, not too much, mix it again. And that's about perfect. Okay, so if you can see that, it's going to flow right off the stick. It's gonna barely leave a mark on the paint that's in the cup and pretty much just dissolve into the other paint. You don't want it to be so thin that it makes a divot. That's too thin. Um, and if it just goes straight in, some paint pours like for the Dutch pours for it to go straight in, I find that makes the paint a little bit too thin for me to control. I like them just a little bit thicker. So I like it to go straight off the stick, make a little bit of a mound, and then pretty much disappear into the paint. So that one's finished. Um, and then I'm gonna do a golden quinacridone nickel azo gold for you. And I'm gonna mix that in here and I'm gonna make a much smaller amount because um, I don't need as much right now. Oh, and these are just these little food storage containers that I pick up from Walmart. They are perfect for storing, mixing and storing your paints. Um, unless you're mixing a base, you oftentimes don't need a ton of paint. Um, and you can store them in there because they have leads and they'll stay good for a while. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a little bit here. I'm, so you can see I'm squeezing it right through the stocking. 
I'm going to cover the bottom there. Always recover up your float trowel because if it is exposed to air for too long, it can go bad and it will smell like rotten eggs. If you ever buy a float trowel and it smells like rotten eggs, you know it's gone bad. Or if it comes out black, not good. Okay, so I, you, I'm not going to need quite as much of this because, as I said before, it's a really high viscosity. So I'm just going to give it a healthy squirt there and mix it in. And we'll notice two things. Well, one is the golden paints and the Floetrol immediately give you some gorgeous cells. Look at that. Woo! That's really cool. Um, I noticed that with all the golden colors when you initially mix them in. Um, and as I've talked about before, mixing different kinds of paints definitely helps with cell reactions. Um, the other thing you're going to notice here is that these paints are just naturally thinner. Like, I'm, I'm not going to need much water at all to add to here because the golden fluid paints are much thinner than the Liquitex basic paints. If you can see here, it's like pretty much to the consistency that the other one was where it falls off the stick, creates a little bit of a mound and then pretty much disappears right into the paint. So I'm gonna take these two paints here and we're gonna do a test to see if they're the same um, thickness. So I like to cut up, when I get my canvases, they come with these like paper wrappers on them and I like to cut them up and use them to test my paints on because they're kind of hard, a little bit like a cardboard or a cardstock, um, and they're very smooth, so the paints are gonna run over them really easily, and I find it's a really good way to test the thicknesses of my paints. So I'm gonna take this um, QNAD that we'll call for short, golden paint, and I'm gonna put that dot right here, and you want about the same amount so that you can get a true test if they're gonna run at the same speed put this one here and then I am just going to go ahead and lift up the paper and we'll see which one runs faster or if they run the same. Alright so you can see that the magenta is running a little bit faster than the QNAD so I am going to just add a tiny bit of water to my golden paint here not too much, because as I said, it's always easier to add water in than it is to add paint or flow trawl afterwards, and you cannot take water out once you put it in. So I've got this one mixed here. It's a little bit thinner, hopefully thin enough. I mean, that, that looks pretty good to me. Um, let's go ahead and test on the other side of the paper here. Drop my magenta over here. Drop my QNAD over here. And let's see what happens. Look at that. They are just about perfect. So they are the same thickness, so even though I wouldn't really put these two colors together, they can be stored and they can be ready to go um, with the other paints when I'm ready to make my Dutch pours. So there you go. Here are our paints. They're ready to go. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have any more questions, drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.